Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're not making soap. We're gonna make something with the men in mind. Uh, my husband has a beard, and since he retired from the Marine Corps, he's had a beard. And so today we're gonna be making beard balm. Uh, and this is a wonderful substance. It's like a solve type uh, consistency. It's very moisturizing. And it's really important for men and facial hair to um, condition the skin underneath their beard. It can get dry and itchy. And then the hair follicles. This recipe is very conditioning. It's not greasy. It's just really wonderful. He loves it. And to make it smell fantastic, um, because you know, you want to smell good for those gentlemen out there with the beards. Uh, I'm going to be using oak and whiskey from uh, Marouge Canada. This was a gift from them to me and I'm so thankful. They sent me all these wonderful fragrances and things to play with and I've just been loving it. One of the things that I love about Marouge Canada fragrances is they have all the pertinent information on the label. It makes it so easy. Uh, it tells you the scent notes. It even tells you the usage rates in most you know, common products. It's just fantastic. So the scent notes to this oak and whiskey is the top note of sherry, middle note of whiskey, and base notes of wood. Very masculine, but it smells good. It's just wonderful. So I have to get everything sanitized and get everything pulled together. So I will share the full recipe down below for this fabulous beard balm. And it's got wonderful ingredients in there, shea butter and hemp seed oil, jojoba oil, lots of really great nutrient dense, hair follicle loving ingredients. And so um, it'll all be written down below for you. So let me get all of my equipment sanitized and prepped and ready to go. And we will come back and make some beard balm. Okay, we are all clean and ready to go here with our formula. And the first thing that I need to do is get my hard oils, beeswax, and butters into my beaker and get it melting here on my double boiler. And then once it's all melted, because beeswax has a high melting point, once it's all melted, we'll bring it back and put our liquid oils in to help cool it down a little bit slowly. I wanna just barely get this to the melting point and not overheat the shea butter or the cocoa butter. I want all the goodness in there. And um, one of the cool things about this formulation is there is no water phase, so you do not need a preservative in here. Uh, you could put one in if you like. I am not putting one in today because this has no water phase. Um, and we're gonna be putting them in these really adorable little two ounce tins. I just think it's the perfect size for a beard balm. A round label fits on top. We'll get to the labeling when this is all said and done, but I pour directly in here, and I think these just make really nice, convenient beard balm tins. A guy can throw this in his shaving kit, he's good to go. So I've got my hard oils and butters all pre-measured here, and I will talk you through what I'm doing. Let's start with the first one here is beeswax and I'm doing 14.8 grams of beeswax, and you can round that up to 15 grams. That's the other thing. This is not super, super picky. Like if you go one gram over or under, you're gonna be okay. So if you wanna round the 14.8 up to 15 grams, that's fine. You could also use candelilla wax if you wanted a vegan option, because I know beeswax is not vegan. Um, there are a couple others, I'm not thinking off the top of my head, but there are some non-beeswax options. I would just Google alternatives for beeswax if you want something different. I'm using beeswax today. This is a deodorized and decolored beeswax. And then next I'm gonna do 14.8 grams of shea butter. There is my shea butter. And again, if you wanna round up to 15 grams, you're good to go. So we'll pop that in there. I wanted to have my hard oils all pre-measured out so that, um, you know, because sometimes you get over or under and it's just easier to have them measured individually. The liquid oils all go directly in here. Uh, next ingredient is cocoa butter. 14.8 grams of cocoa butter. This is pretty easy so far. And the last hard butter is coconut oil. And for coconut oil, I have 16 grams of coconut oil. Uh, some people have coconut oil allergies and they'll wanna know a substitution for coconut oil. And I have not made this formulation without it. So I would suggest that you try another hard butter or a hard oil. You could try mango or, um, oh gosh, there are a couple subs. I'll look it up and write it down below if I come up with some good ones. But I have not played around with this formula without the coconut oil. So if you wanna substitute that, I suggest scaling this recipe down and starting with a very small test batch and see how you like the firmness and the 
you know, workability of it without the coconut oil. I like it in there, so I put it in there. So now I'm just gonna very slowly put this on my double boiler, turn up the heat and let that melt. And as soon as this is all melted down completely with the beeswax will probably be the last thing to melt because it has the highest melting point. We'll pull it off, put it back here and get to our liquid ingredients. all melted here the beeswax is all melted and I'm gonna keep my hot plate out just in case the oils because my studio is very cool cool so my liquid oils might chill this down enough to firm it and um, I might need to pop it back in here just for a little bit but right now we're gonna add let's see what our next ingredient is jojoba oil and I got this from Soper's Choice uh, you can get it anywhere you like. Uh, it's I think Soper's Choice, if you're buying in bulk, has some really good prices. Their shipping is really high, but the oils are a good price. So when I order from them, I order in bulk. So there it is, jojoba oil at a rate of 14.8 grams or 15 grams. If you go over a little, it's, it's okay. So I'm gonna pour real slow here. Okay. And the next liquid ingredient is my hemp seed oil. I got this, if I can get it in here, on Amazon. It's a cold processed, expeller pressed, unrefined organic hemp oil. It's very nice and I love the dark rich color of it. And we need 25 grams of hemp oil or hemp seed oil. Okay, and last but not least, I have my olive oil. Um, and you can use the, any liquid oil that you like. I love olive oil. I think it's very moisturizing and nourishing on your skin. So that's what I'm using at a rate of 14 grams. Okay, and that is all of the oils and butters, that's it. But now you can see, because my oils were so cool, it's starting to coagulate a little bit. I'm gonna put it back under my hot plate here until it's nice and fluid before I add my fragrance. And today, uh, so the rate for lotion, which even though this is a solve, it's a on skin contact, um, not rinse off product. So I'm putting it under the lotion category and it says you can use this fragrance at a rate of 0.5 to 1%. I'm going for 0.5%. So I'm gonna add 0.6 grams of this fragrance in here after I get it completely melted. And the reason you want it all melted is because if you have some little firm bits in there, I want the fragrance fully dispersed through this entire cup here. If you have any like globs in there, the fragrance won't mix in it. And so you could potentially have a little unscented bit and I just want it really incorporated throughout the entire base here and it's so simple um, and like I said you can play around with the ingredients if you don't like the liquid oils I'm using today you can try other liquid oils if you want to replace the coconut oil with babassu oil or another replacement but I would say scale down this recipe and uh, make your adjustments and see how you like the finish. I like this to be a little bit firm, but not too firm. When you put your finger in it, I want you to be able to get a little out, work it in your hands, and then work it on your beard hairs and the skin underneath so that all of the wonderful moisturizing properties, the cocoa butter and the shea butter are so high in vitamins and just their moisture abilities and the hemp seed oil, it's all all the ingredients that I chose to go in here are really good for the hair follicles and the skin underneath on the dermis. It's just, I chose these ingredients for, for what I liked about them. But if you have other oils and butters that you particularly like, you know, play around with it. These kind of recipes that don't have a water phase um, are very user friendly. It's really hard to mess this up. As long as you have some beeswax and some hard butters and oils that will firm it up, um, you have a lot of playroom. <laughs> So I think we've got this all. Yep, let me get my towel. I'm not seeing any coagulation or any little clumpy bits in there. So let's go ahead and get this on our scale. Tear it out. 
And now I'm going to use a pipette to measure so that I don't overshoot. And I'm going for 0.6 grams of fragrance. Oh, this is such a beautiful fragrance. All right, and now I want to get this stirred in really, really well. I'm going to stir it several times this direction, several times this direction. I would just want that fragrance very evenly dispersed throughout this entire cup here. Here we go. Look how easy peasy this was. I just love making salves and beard balms and I think they smell terrific. My husband, my boys, everybody I know with a beard loves this formulation. It is a huge hit. So we're going to pour it in our containers and let them cool fully before we put the caps on because you don't want any condensation in there because again this did not have a water phase. As long as you keep it water free it's very very stable. I just let these cool at room temperature for several hours. They are 100% solidified. And uh, after I talk about the labels, I'm gonna dip my finger in and show you the texture of this. I just think these are so emollient and rich and good. I love this uh, equation for this formula. But again, it's so user-friendly. I encourage you to play around with the percentages a little bit and the different oils and butters and really customize it for your own. So here are the labels I made. Um, I got these from onlinelabels.com. This is the size I'm using. There's the number. These are two inch round craft labels. And uh, I do the craft because that's what goes with my shop. And they even have templates in there. So if you put in the label you want and search their templates, um, you can come up with your own. But for this beard balm, I just made a very simple label with my name, the name of what it is, the scent. It's a beard balm. It's conditioning. And then the list of ingredients from greatest to least is how you want to list your ingredients and the weight of the jars. These came up to 62 grams per jar, which is roughly two ounces. So there it is. Let's go ahead and get a lid on here and label it so you can see the finished product. I do not shrink wrap band these, but you certainly could. Um, and Wholesale Supplies Plus would give you the measurements for the different shrink bands. But personally, I don't shrink band these tins. And they do have a little um, seal. It has like a foam lining. So when you crank the lid down, it makes a nice seal on there. So I think they are ready to go. And just simply put the label on. And there it is. These, I think, are glorious. My husband loves them. Um, so let me dig my finger in here. I'm going to give this to him. So this will be for me um, and show you the texture. So at first you can see it kind of shines up. It's semi hard, but it's workable. Just a little bit of pressure and you get a little. So here's what I recommend for a man with a short beard or not a full beard. If you've got a long beard, you go ahead and get a little more. But for a short beard, my husband keeps his pretty close cropped, about a pea size amount. And then you just rub it in your hands and you would work that through your hairs and into your skin on your chin and your cheeks and get that down into the dermis layer of your skin and really work it through. And this is very moisturizing. It is a little shiny because you've got oils and butters in here. If you have dry hair and split ends, I would even use this as a hair oil. Um, I love the fragrance. It's light. We didn't go heavy on the, ascent, or on the fragrant oil in here, so it's not overpowering. I would definitely pull this through my staticky hair or my extra dry hair ends. Um, and there it is. I just think this is wonderful. You know, it's like a balm. I would use this as a moist, deep moisturizer too. The ingredients in here are boss. I love this. <laughs> and there, you can see it sinks right in. It's beautiful. It smells great and light. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you play around with this recipe. If you do, leave a comment down below. Let me know how you like it. Thanks so much for joining me and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and have an awesome day.